Welcome back, everybody. Today we are going to be discussing whether the game was harder back in the day or is it harder in modern times and today's game. Now, I'm going to be upfront with you. I made this video because I knew you were going to click on it. I've seen this debate play out a thousand times before on Verbank or some other social media site. Players get so worked up about this and people get so defensive on this. I've had people tell me that my accomplishments from the past don't even matter anymore. Um, I've seen play, modern players get told that the game is so much easier now that their accomplishments don't even matter. And the fact of the matter is, is people don't ever want to admit that they didn't play in the absolute hardest time of the game and they didn't absolutely um, they're not so much better than everybody else, and they, they're not playing against the absolute best competition. But in reality, I don't think this debate is as hard as everybody else makes it out to be. I think there's some very, very clear facts um, that I don't really feel like you can debate a whole lot. So some of the common arguments I've heard from uh, modern players are that events are much larger nowadays than you had in the past. The caliber of the average player is much higher than it used to be in the past, and that the World Championships is much larger than what it was in the past. Now, um, past players always will make the counter arguments, the game was far more complex back in the day than it is today. It's much harder to navigate, say, a Mulock mirror match than it is a Picaram mirror match. And that players had to be much more well-rounded. Deck building, playing, um, etc. are all major components and you had to be an expert at each one of those. You couldn't just be a great deck builder, you couldn't just be a great player. Um, compared to more modern Pokemon where um, deck building has largely been removed from competitive play. Um, and past players will also often make the argument that it was much harder to qualify for worlds than it is today. And I think overall what we're truly arguing is the access of information. And um, the internet revolutionized many industries, including Pokemon. Um, if you can't hear that dial-up beep um, as soon as I talk about it, or you don't remember, you never experienced your mom or dad yelling at you to get off the internet so they could make a phone call. Um, you truly never experienced the internet age of the game or lack thereof. And I, I've said it plenty of times, but I really, really do feel like um, deck building is the greatest creates the greatest skill gap in the game. So much so that the company has done everything they possibly could to remove it from competitive play. Um, now, I'm also going to say, and I hit on this in a little bit, but just because they have, Pokemon has done so much to narrow the skill gap between um, the top players and the average players doesn't mean they've completely removed it. Um, even in today's era, you see the exact same players doing well. If it truly was a coin flip game, you wouldn't see players like Azul winning a ton of events or topping a ton of events. Some other truths, and these are more just side facts that I find to be interesting um, that I kind of thought about when I was making this video. Um, players rarely build reputations early in their careers. And that was something that I noticed. I didn't even know um, until I kind of dove a little bit more into this. Uh, Daniel Altavara has played since Stans Sandstorm, which was essentially like 2003, but didn't really become a household name till 2015, 2016. I think when he started going on those regional tears. Tord played before 2012, but once again, really wasn't a handful, wasn't really a household name till 2016, 2017. Um, and when he had those, uh, that crazy internationals run, and I think you see this to a certain extent back in the day, even players that were relatively successful early on, like Jason Klusinski, really didn't build that reputation until, um, 
years into the career. Um, you know, even Jason won Worlds in 2006 um, and then 2008, but he just continued building that reputation. He didn't get his first Nationals win until, I believe, 2015. Um, Chris Fulop, once again, found some early success, but it was some of those later years where he really started building into it. And I guess for my myself, and I'm, I... I feel very vain putting myself in the same sentence as I, someone like Jason or Fulop, but um, my first couple years of games, yeah, I got my Worlds invite and things like that, but I don't really feel like I truly was kind of coming into my own till 2007, 2008. Um, and then the second thing is the best players benefit from information just like the weaker players do. And I think there, I think you can make some big arguments on how much of an impact that the access to information has had on players especially the average players. You took, you have players that were very, very poor deck builders and essentially handed them tournament winning lists, which completely removed that aspect of it from the game. And, um, but at the same token too, I think a lot of the best players in the game also benefited from that access to information. You saw um, a couple of years ago where like, Dead Draw Gaming won, was winning like every single regionals, one right after another, and there's only a team of like five or six players. Um, and just having that um, that strong group, that strong testing group, and that ability to communicate with each other. I'm also going to say, I guess to use like a personal example, I fully admit I got my Worlds invite in 2008 off of uh, Chris Fulop and the Top Cut. And I won a regionals in 2009 completely based off playing Chris Fulop's Polkulus, I think I changed one card in it. So that access to information absolutely benefits the average players, but I think you also see how that can benefit the top players as well. Um, and But absolutely, it, the access to information and online and just how much the game has tried to remove, the company has tried to remove deck building as part of the game, um, absolutely has an impact on... I would say that average player base. But I think the trade-off for that is at the same time, um, back in the day, there was definitely a larger gap between the average player and the top players, but that's only because the top players had to work, I'm going to say work harder or test more to um, have that edge in the deck building process. Um, and I feel like I can maybe explain that a little bit better, but just that the top players had to be really good deck builders along with really good players, and you couldn't just have one or the other. And I think in today's game, it is a little bit easier to be an average or poor deck builder and still be able to get good tournament results because you can basically net deck or copy lists from other people. And to be honest with you, I think why this isn't as much of a debate as people make it out to be is I don't feel like you can debate the facts. I, I think anybody who says that events aren't larger today than they were back in the day, I mean, you can just go and look at that. Um, events in 2021 were much larger than they were in 2004, 2005. Um, at the same point, I think you can also argue that the average player is considerably better in 2021 than they were in 2004, 2005. But on the same token, I don't think you can debate that the game is much simpler today. It is far easier, like I said, to play a uh, Picaram mirror match than it is to play a Mulock mirror match. In my opinion, the game, you can't even compare the two games. They have removed so much strategy and so much complexity to the game and simplified it so much compared to back in the day. Um, I also don't think you can debate the fact that it was much harder to qualify for Worlds back in the day. Um, 2007 is the Worlds that everybody points to, where I think there was 12 players from North America that got invited to play in that. Versus nowadays, I feel like anybody who... Um, Worlds isn't really meant to be this special event. Anybody who puts forth a little bit of effort and can travel enough is going to get a Worlds invite. I mean, you could be a very average player, and if you have the ability to travel enough, you'll probably end up with a world's invite. It just, it's not the same, it's just not the same, in my opinion, um, as it used to be. And you can argue maybe that's for the better, maybe that's for the worst, but I generally think that, you know, those arguments you make for why the game was harder back in the day, um, and then the argument you make for why the game is harder in modern times, 
I, I don't really think those facts you can debate. I, I agree with usually both sides when they when they make those arguments in those cases. But the cold truth is, and I know this is going to kill some egos, is the top players from back in the day are still top players today. Ross, Pram, Pablo, all were phenomenal players in those early years and are still absolutely dominant players today. Um, at the same token, though, the top players of today would most likely have found success back in the day. Um, Tord is a great example of this, who came in and joined our RS to PK tournaments and picked it up incredibly quickly and was playing very complex decks in that format at a very, very high level. If Tord had been active in 2004, 2005, 2006, he most likely would have been a top player, just like Ross or Alex or Jason. Um, and I think you'd see that with most of the top players today. Azul. Azul probably would have been a top player back in the day, just as he is a top player today. I think there is. I mean, you're always going to see players that do well in certain formats over others. And I've definitely seen players that excel in certain formats and just can't really... Um, they kind of lose it after that format leaves, but for the most part, the top players that have been consistent in recent years probably would have been consistent back in the day. And if you had the top, the big names that played back in the day still playing as consistently today, they'd still be top players. And I think one of the things that I hear so often is you hear very average players will say, well, yeah, if I played back in the day, I easily would have been winning tournaments and doing well and always getting my world's invite. And the truth of the matter is you probably wouldn't be. Um, you probably would not be able to have the deck building skills necessary to do that without all the access to information that you have today. You probably wouldn't be the wouldn't have the playing ability back in the day to play at that level. And I know players are always going to disagree with it, but it's true. Um, you think if you're a very average player today with all this information, if you really think you'd go back in the day that you'd be a considerably good player and that's probably not realistic at all i'm going to say that i think you have i think if you're an average player today there's almost zero chance you would have been a great player back in the day but i do feel like the reverse can be true i feel like average players from back in the day can continue to grow and evolve their game and get to that top level um, once again, and like I hit a little bit on the last slide, you have players that played very early on um, that saw some success, but didn't really hit that household name until much later on in their careers. And I, I think the same can be true of today's players. Just because you're an average player today doesn't mean that in three to four years, your name isn't going to go going to be thrown around when they're talking about um you know, who the smart money is on for winning worlds. I do think that an average player can put in the time, put in the work and put in really studying the game and can get to that next level. So that's gonna go ahead and wrap up the video here. Uh, feel free, throw your comments down below. I know you guys are not gonna hold back on me. Um, do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? But anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.